Hello, I'm Joe. Welcome to our own vegetables, fruit, and herbs. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back to Joe's allotment. So we're now in week one of June in our sort of weekly series of um, jobs to do throughout a whole allotment year. Um, so this week's jobs, uh, we've got to cut the king's head off the artichokes. And I'll explain more about that later. We're going to cut down the comfrey and uh, start making some comfrey tea. Got a few things to sow directly into the pot today, some more radish successionally and some leeks as well. We're going to plant a few uh, more leeks. We've got some leeks already growing to plant out um, in a week or so. But I'd like to have some extra ones just in case we haven't got enough. And we'll also get a bit of a later crop for that. Uh, I'm going to plant out the basil in the garden at home. And I want to plant out some more sweet corn into some pots later as well. So we've got a successional crop, or well not successional crop, but a later crop of sweet corn to follow from the ones we planted out last week. So might have a couple of more jobs to do, but that's the main jobs to start with. Um, I'd like to say thank you for the guy behind the camera. I'd also like to say thank you to the people that subscribed recently. Um, like reading your comments. So keep 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 subscribing. That's all I can say. If you like to subscribe, the subscribe button at the bottom here somewhere. So please uh, press the button now and subscribe to follow our journey throughout the allotment year. Week one of June. Week two next week. Thank you. I said the first job is to cut off what's called the king head, which is the largest artichoke that forms first. Um, cut this off and it allows the other smaller ones to develop onwards as well. So not only do you cut off the king's head, you cut off sort of two to three inches off the stem as well. Take that home. So what's edible is the little bit at the bottom of each leaf, the half moon white area. And also a heart in the middle, which is also edible. So I'll cut those off first. And then we move on to the next job after that. I've just pre-prepared this little area here. I'm going to put some radish in here, a little bit of spring onion and some leeks. So what I do is I'll get, the, get these ready and I'll pre-water them first. I'm just going to get some water. French breakfast radish. It's the next successional planting, so we do a little row of that. Just a small row, which should be enough. And then I've got some uh, white Lisbon spring onions. So the radish should be out in sort of four to seven days, and we should be able to uh, crop those in four to six weeks. The spring onions will take 14 to 21 days to come up and they take a few months before you can crop them. So, a little row of those. Old heritage variety of spring onion, so nice and cheap. 75 pence from Wilkinson. Nice cheap spring onion. That's those done, I'll just cover those over. And firm them down a bit. And that's a bit more selling done today. You haven't done anything in that one. I've got to eat it yet. <laughs> nice weed coming up there, look. I'm ready. Put that one there, shall I? I'll just do a little short row of leeks. I've got a mussel burrow and an elephant leek. So I'll just do a little, we've got some growing at home already in a big pot, which is going to be transplanted in a week or so. So these are just to follow and just to. We've got space we can put them in, if not, we'll leave them grow here and we'll use them as young leeks. Is that one? And muscle bar as well. Stone out of here. That's it. 
hopefully they'll germinate in 14 to 21 days as well. I'll just cover these over lightly. Give it a good sperm down this is off. It's been pre water so they should uh, hopefully get away quite quickly. Give all that firming down as well. That's it. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm sawing down the concrete. I'm going to put it in a dustbin and cover it with water to make some concrete fertilizer. So this is Russian Bocking 14 comfrey, which was developed in the 1950s in the United Kingdom. Um, and it's very rich in potassium, phosphate, and nitrogen. So it's equal to farmyard manure, believe it or not, because the, the, the roots actually go down two meters into the ground, draw up all the nutrients in the ground. So when you put them into water to rot down, all those nutrients are released back into the water. So what I'll do is I'll put it into a, a bin, um, fill it up with water and it's ready to use in sort of four to six weeks and what I use it is like a three to one ratio so I use a third of the comfrey juice and a third, two thirds water and it's good for tomatoes, peppers, squashes, any vegetable really so um, it's good stuff so we've got a few patches, one here, one over there one round the corner behind the tree there um, and we've got some on the other plot as well so what I do is I'll fill up this bin there's another uh, container down the other end I'll fill up as well um, and we'll use it throughout the growing season so you're cutting it down it, it regenerates very quickly in no time so that means you get a few cuts a year really this will grow up again and say six to eight weeks I'll, I'll cut another load down and make another batch just a matter of putting them in the bin. And they rot down very quickly. So it doesn't take that long for it to rot down. And if you know anyone who's got any, it's um, spread by division um, of digging up the root basically. So if you can dig up a bit of root, um, plant it, it'll grow on. And every year or two or three years, you can actually divide those roots and make more and more plants. Excellent crop to have. On the top. Right, so I'll just top that up with water now. I weigh them down a bit. Some stones. Just keep them submerged. And we'll fill it up with water now. That's filling up quite fast now. Um, I'll put a top on it and a weight just to keep the top down. And um, that should be ready as I said in four to four to eight weeks really to start using. Um, other jobs for June, week one of June is a continuous weeding which we have to do this time of year and also watering if it doesn't rain we need to water the crops that are growing um, continuously um, just to keep them going really um, so there are other jobs we can do this is nearly full up now so i'll turn the water off and uh, put the top on just notice we've got a lot of black fly on our um ball beans so few approaches we can try and wash them off um, we can hope some uh, ladybirds come along and eat, eat the vast majority of them or I can bring along some of our um, homemade insecticide and give them a spray later I might do that I think I'll bring, a, bring along the insecticide and spray them because they're not going to be cropping for quite a while so that'd be okay to use it and it's mainly it, it, I mean, I'll make it myself it's chilies cinnamon and garlic and oil so it's not harmful it's all organic um, but I'll, be, I'll give those a spray later. So I'm doing the, the last succession of um, climbing beans here. So we've got the Lima Odell Pepper, which is I think they're about three inch pods in like a butter bean. We like butter beans, so if we can dry some of those for butter beans, that'd be lovely. And I also use some uh, haricot type bean, which is called a Coco Bianca. So I'll fill up the la this last section here, um, push them in with my thumb and give them a good watering. I'll just do two and a one. I'll just do one and a one. 
just do those and then I'll do the haricot ones as well I think just in case they don't germinate I'll um, spread them out and do some of those haricot ones as well and to my fun bet and we'll give those a good watering and hopefully they'll germinate in 7 to 14 days and uh, we'll get a lovely crop of things that we can dry this year and also use fresh So the next thing I'm going to sow is the next accessional sowing of French beans. These are dwarf borlato bean called Lingua Fuconano. They look like a uh, kidney bean. Very productive variety. So I'll get some of these put in about four to six inches apart and give them a good watering. So these are just pushed in thumb depth as well. They should germinate in sort of 7 to 14 days. I'll give this a good watering before we uh, depart. Hopefully we'll get a lovely crop of uh, beans that we can use fresh and also dry. They look like a bit of like a chili bean actually so looking forward to drying these and seeing how they go. Never grown this variety before. Next ones we're sowing is a dwarf yellow bean called Rock A4. I suppose the, the actual bean is yellow, but the seeds are black. They look like a nice um, black bean to dry as well. Also use fresh when they're yellow. So, same with these, four or six inches apart. So pushed in, run depth again. And we'll give these a watering as well before we go. And these should also germinate in sort of seven to 14 days. Hopefully give us a lovely crop later on the year. So I'll just water in the middle and then it's sort of a sink over to the side. time for the um, rhubarb as well it's a good time to actually if you're gonna if you want to um, freeze any it's a good time of the year to pull it up it's still very soft cooked really well so if you leave it much longer it starts to get firm and not so uh, <laughs> rubbery brittle and it takes a lot longer to cook as well cook down and it's uh, so a good time of year so I can ever put the leaves in my um, insecticide Make some more insecticide, I'll put them on the compost bin. So I'll, I'll take it back home today and we'll um, free some, I think. The leaves are amazing this year, they're huge. So that's one batch we can freeze. And I'll um, cut some more in the next few days as well, if I've got room in the freezer. Um, we we'll, we'll made some lovely rhubarb falls the other day, so they're in the fridge at the moment. I could do one of those at the moment, I'm quite hot. So, um, yeah, so I'll cut that down for the next few days before it starts to sort of deteriorate. So, back home now, got a bit of sewing, that's it's fine. Um, so, we're going to do some sweet corn in some pots. Um, already planted out the sweet corn, so these are like a later crop hopefully. Um, variety called Incredible F1, so they go about a uh, half inch deep and we'll put them in these pots um, and they should be ready for cropping in about 15 weeks time. So if I do just a few in each pot, and when they're large enough I'll um, transplant them into the pot somewhere. That's it. So I'll push those in and I'll uh, cover them.
already pre-walked with the pots. Just cover a bit, turn those in. And I'll put these into the greenhouse to give them a bit more uh, heat for germination. Then they can stay outside until they're ready to be um, potted on. The other thing I'm doing today is some more parsley and coriander. So I've got a flat leaf variety, Moon Kraus 2. No, it's a curly variety actually. Curly variety, Moon Kraus 2. A flat leaf variety called Italian Giant. And some coriander. So this would be like a succession all from the last one we planted out a couple of weeks ago. Um, what I do is I also keep some plants for putting into the greenhouse at the end of the season. We had a good, good uh, growth in the greenhouse last year and we dried all, all that lot from the greenhouse last year. It gives us quite a bit of parsley to keep going till the next crop's ready. So do the coriander. So I'll keep them in their little blocks when I plant them out. I won't put too many in each module. Do for the parsley, for the coriander even. This is a flat leaf parsley, quite a fine seed. That should do. And then we've got the curly variety as well. These take a bit longer to germinate, these take sort of 14 to 28 days, uh, very slow to germinate. That's it. I'll give the coriander a bit deeper covering, but these are a bit smaller, so I'll um, give these a quite a light covering. Give these a firm down as well. These have been pre watered already, so these can go into the greenhouse as well. Make sure I keep them nice and moist. As I said, this should germinate in sort of 14 to 21 days. So that's the planting for today. Um, the only thing I've got to do now is I'm going to um, plant out the basil, but I'm going to put it into the garden rather than on the allotment so we can use it as it grows and um, it's there all the time for whenever we need it rather than trying to remember to bring it home from the allotment. So I'll do that next. So I've got two varieties of basil here. We've got sweet basil and a variety called cinnamon basil so i plant them all out here in the plot at home and see how they go let's try and plant them a little bit deeper now in the pot give a bit of support the roots have hit the bottom of the pot that's always a good sign so one Two, three. And it should be okay. We're firming in and we'll give those a watering as well in a moment. And they should uh, get established quite quickly. And what I do is I keep cutting them as they're growing. They get to a certain height, I cut them and they regerminate and give you another, another crop as well. Last one going in here. It gives these a good watering in a minute. That's it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve basil plants. So that should give us a decent crop. Okay, so that's uh, jobs for week one of June completed. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave us a like or leave us a comment. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so and follow our allotment journey and see what we've got to do in week two of June. Thank you, goodbye.